All right, super coaches, I hope you gathered round. Gather round, I certainly did. Still feeling a bit dusty, actually, from the weekend out there with the AFL Today show in Radelaide. Don't call it Radelaide, Al, though, apparently. Jeez. You can't call the city of churches Radelaide. That's just not allowed. That's not, not allowed, apparently. Not happening. The Ballarat of South Australia. No, this is the Supercoach AFL podcast. You're in and out guide to the greatest game on earth, AFL Supercoach, because footy is back. And I'm your host, James Clements. And joining me today, some of the greatest minds in this great sport... Of super coach. We've got Patch over there for the first time. What's going on, Patch? G'day. Hello. I'm delighted to be here making my official AFL Super Coach podcast debut. It's very fun. And of course, we've got a bloke, I don't know, his, his total overall score, his ranking, is also one of my favorite bands. If you're really into like quasi California metal California surf rock vibes, what is it, Al? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I'm ranked 311. 311, there it is. Play the drop. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling about this? You're at, right there at the very pointy end, Al. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's it's a nice feeling. I mean, it's just you just get one or two picks right at the start of the year and it can make a massive difference, starting with someone like Jack Steele or, or Isaac Heaney, I'm sure we'll talk about. And, um, yeah, just, uh, it, yeah, it helps a lot. But I, I'm, I'm wrapped to be here with Patch to have him on, fans of the uh, Supercoach and Jock Reynolds' uh, podcast over the years will know The Voice, um, and great to have him now in the official stable of Supercoach and on camera for those of you watching the video. Yeah, I, you get to see my my hideous face for the first <laughs> time, which has been hidden away. Um, no, it's super exciting to be here, um, and I yeah, very, very lucky uh, to be here. Very unlucky for everyone that now has to, you know, thought that escaped me when... Jock and I just pulled the pin last year, and now I'm back in pog form. <laughs> um, my condolences to all of you. I also just think now that we've got a uh, we've got Patch over there, we could also get Al to really grow out his beard. And yeah, we'll just go, like, a bit, um, go, mm, we'll go full beard. In the all right, before we get into the gather round wrap and set you up for round five, remember to sign up to Supercoach Plus if you haven't already. What are you doing? Jump on your tips.com.au, get your tips in, just the tips. And for all the insights you need, remember, subscribe to codesports.com.au. There's some really great articles already up this week. I believe we've got Phantom later on in the show. And here's one is Chockers with the good stuff. Loved it. And, of course, you can follow Al on Twitter, X, Al underscore, underscore Superfooty, and uh, Patch to the Max, one of the great handles. I do love that. Uh, nice one. Without further ado, let's get into it. Gather round. Pretty fun. How are our scores this week, gentlemen? I managed to get 23-21. I managed to say, okay, loophole Gornicus with the 129. Sort of saved it. I missed out on the Heaney big score, though, uh, much to my own chagrin. But otherwise, I was pretty happy with that. What about you, Patch? Um, 2,283, which normal years, if you're scoring that in round four, ecstatic. <laughs> this year, no, terrible, awful. Um, plummeted 700 ranks down. I was ranked 360-something last week when I was begging Al to be, come on the show because it'll never get better than this, never be higher than this. And now, well, I'm still on, but ranked outside the top 1,000 now by 30-odd spots. So I'm not mad. It's just, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> just like my parents. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Uh, but what about you, Al? Come on. What did you actually end up on? Yeah, 2,367, which was, uh, yeah, um, fantastic That's result. So I'm, many I'm, points. I'm going all right. That's so many points. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the points. He's just taking all the points now, Al. All right, what was the gather round wrap, though? Heroes and villains for each of us. Uh, very easy for me. I was there uh, for a bunch of these games. I think we got to six of the nine games for the AFL Today Show. Lots of other fun content as well. Go check that all out on the uh, socials and whatnot. Um, but the big hero for me was the man who's also the handsomest man at gather round. Three votes. C. Rose. He was absolutely unreal. Now, we have talked this one out in terms of heroes do we need a bit of an asterisk for when they play Essendon, though, Well, Because I'll tell you what, he ripped them apart. This just keeps happening. I kind of love this. Well, Patch is the expert here as a uh, close Essendon watcher. Well, I'm not watching them that closely because I've got all these fingers in the way. <laughs> Every time they're on the screen, it's just I keep covering my face and just peering through gaps in fingers because they're bad. They're bad, folks. Uh, don't know what happened against the Kilda, but... That we'll be looking at, back at that at the end of the year going, how did they win that? How What happened? I love it. And... We will never know the answer. With all my in-laws, all Essendon fans as well, I'm loving this. But still, uh, Rosie, he was fantastic. That entire port midfield was really good. Mm. We'll talk about Jason Horn Francis later with the with the Phantom. Uh, and also, look, it's like between Butters and Rosie, it's sort of like they're alternating, dominating week in, week out, which is a pretty good situation to be in if you're a power fan, I guess. Uh, my villain, though, Al, your beloved Nick Vlosten. 
Ooh. What am I doing? <laughs> I go from short to Boston and somehow I got less points. Maybe, maybe avoid Richmond defenders. Maybe. 45. I talked him up last week. Felt like the role was perfect. I was there Sunday afternoon, Norwood, with the really skinny boundary lines. Yeah, it was, straight uh, boundary line. it was yeah, quite watching it like they had these aerial shots and it um it was quite an unusual shaped ground. Yeah. What was not unusual was me just like just bending the elbow a few times as well, which watching that line pretty closely yeah. just going, That's gonna sail over. It really did. It was very yeah. fun. Yeah, but they, they did, didn't play on an oval, they played on a rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So Vlost didn't look, what the hell, man? I bring him in. I was feeling pretty good about it too, and that's just completely backfired on me. It's just the latest litany of a Hayden Young, Nick Martin trade from your oh, mate, Jim. Yeah, yeah, revolving door. But they do play in Perth this weekend, the Tigers, so a bigger ground. Um, yeah, maybe a uh, different opposition might might uh, help you out there. For the bands back, let's go. All right, Al, who is your hero from the weekend? Oh, I'll have to give it to Isaac uh, Heaney, the number one scoring player in Supercoach, and I had the captaincy on him on the weekend, so that was a big reason for that. Big score. He was unbelievable uh, against West Coast. We thought he'd go all right, and um, that was fantastic. 165 points, averaging 144 for the season, which is incredible. Um, has a week off now, which is well and truly earned. Um, be uh, a nice reprieve for anyone who was crazy enough to uh, not start him in their teams. <laughs> who would have done that, I wonder? Who would have not only done that, but then done the trade and then half an hour before his first price rise going, nah, Nick Martin will be fine. Let's stick with Nick Martin. I'll tell Let's you. not do that trade. Couldn't be me. It's like the one it was thing me. <laughs> it's like the one thing that I've nailed this year was moving heaven and earth to get Heaney in on that first price rise. And I'm like, I might have screwed the pooch on everything else, but nailed the Heaney one. I love that. Uh, what about your Villanelle? Uh, I was probably being harsh here because I'm going to say uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio. Uh, I've seen quite a few people trading him out this week, and I'm not going that far because he was pretty unlucky. He scored 63, which is his lowest for the year, but he got stuck on the bench in the last quarter, and I think it wasn't really his fault. Hawthorne had nearly used up all their rotations for the game, so they were very restricted in what they could do. I think the ball maybe got stuck on the wrong side of the ground. He ended up spending, uh, I've looked it up, 20 minutes and 58 seconds of the last quarter sitting on the bench. And with a close game with lots of points up for grabs, uh, that's always going to hurt your score. So uh, tough on Massimo this week, but um, hopefully he can bounce back. That was a fascinating sort of end of that game. Obviously, it was like super mm -hmm. close, and I was there on the hill uh, watching it surrounded by Pies fans. So that was even fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> just as a neutral supporter, you're like, this is great. You get to see yeah, the that, that last in advance when they saw um, James Sicily heading to the forward line. They just threw everybody down there. It's awesome. It was, it was really fun to watch. And, I mean, Collingwood had this thing last year where came to a close finish. You just knew they were going to just ice the game. But it didn't look like that. It didn't feel like that at all. It was just panic stations, anything panic could have happened. Panic was real. It was fantastic. And I'm just like, you know, back in my head, where's Massimo? <laughs> Get <laughs> yeah. more Massimo. All right, what about you, Patch? Who was your hero? Uh, my hero this week was uh, the one Richmond defender we should be picking, apparently, in Tom Brown, um, who, Al, I know you had a great time watching him on the weekend, just Caleb Daniel like lasers off halfback. Yeah, no, it uh, was a miss. I talked about him on the show last week and did not uh, bring him into my super coach team, which is a bit of a miss. But as a Tiger supporter, uh, we need some of these kids to really come on. And, yeah, he looks like a real player back there, especially, yeah, just his ball usage was uh, was fantastic. Yeah, I was hoping for, like, a, you know, another 60, 65, which is, you know, what he's been very bankable on so far, and 95. Hey, like, I'm happy with that. Um, not happy with not having Isaac Heaney, who is my villain this week, and I can't tell you whether or not it's more pain not only owning Isaac Heaney or owning an Essendon scarf, which which hurts more. I, yes. I feel like in both of these cases, you're the villain, right? So Yeah, maybe the, maybe the villain, maybe the, maybe the villain is me. Heaney. I'm the yeah. villain. <laughs> That's um, the key connector of all the things we're talking about. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Tough scenes, tough scenes. All right, before we get into round five, uh, remember, we've got buys again, Al. We had the 22 on the field this week. We go back to buys with Collingwood and Sydney on by. So you got the best 18 on the field. Interesting setup. How else are we looking at this one? Yeah, that's a big one because I think we've been a little bit lucky with the early buys not having too many players missing. We've been able to cover for them with some of these uh, scores off the bench have been pretty good, but it's going to be a lot harder this week with, um, I think there's five or six Sydney players that are in the you know sort of top percentage owned players in Supercoach. Uh, Jordan, very high. Grundy, very high. Heaney, um, Errol Goulden. Uh, Matt Roberts is uh, going fantastic and I certainly wouldn't be wanting to trade uh, him out at this stage. So how we cover for them is going to be tricky. And obviously Nick Dacos, when you throw him in the mix as well. Um, so that'll govern a lot of our moves this week. The other news around really injury-wise is uh, Sean Darcy is expected to play for Frio this week. So if you've had um, uh, Luke Jackson like me and, uh, and Patch for the first few rounds, he's been scoring really well. Not 100% sure what's going to happen with Darcy back. It's not going to help him. He's not going to be the number one ruck on his own. But hopefully maybe Darcy just 
eases his way in. And yeah. uh, maybe they sub him out at three quarter time. Or yeah, something. that'd be good. Like, good. Know. Yeah, we'll Justin see. Longmuir, if you're listening, I think that'd be a good plan. So yeah, a bit of a watch. I'm, I'm not planning on trading out Luke. I'd really like to keep him through the buys where he can help cover for these uh, rucks who are missing. So get a couple more weeks out of him at least, hopefully. Last one. And of course, Luke Parker looking to be back after the Swans buy, yeah. stuff like this as well. Uh, that that means Isaac Heaney goes back to full forward, right? <laughs> that he's, he's bad now, right? He- hello? Hello? <laughs> we'll talk about James Jordan in a second, but it's like, yeah, I think this is like the tipping point for someone like him, right? So it's a bit of a tricky one. And Zach Williams has pulled up sore, apparently. Yeah, there was just some rumours going around that he had some ice uh, on his leg after the game, and that always is, you know, alarm bells with someone like him who's Injury history is not great, but uh, Carlton's saying he's okay. Maybe had some scans, hopefully just precautionary, but, yeah, probably one to watch when those teams drop uh, on Thursday. Wait for teams. <laughs> teams. Uh, I was on the same flight as the uh, Carlton team uh, over to Adelaide on Thursday, and I did just at one point go, should I just offer to, like, massage Zach Williams' like, hammies the entire way? You've got a 100 millimetres of, uh, millilitres of deep heat you've managed <laughs> to smuggle onto the plane. Just, yeah, nothing sus. I'm just here to help. Like, that's all it is. <laughs> it was all good. Uh, but, yeah, the best part of that was Cooter just jumping on the uh, loudspeaker mid-flight. Didn't win the tickets to the grand final, though, but, oh, well, we can always hope next time. Uh, stocks up, stocks down after round four. Who are we buying this week? As we sort of head into, well, you know, into post gather round, heading into round five, the vibes on this is a bit tricky. But I think whilst I was watching this game unfold on Friday night, I'm like, I have to get Jason Horn Francis into my super coach team next week. Not knowing what his score was actually on the NL, but he was just dominating left, right, and center. And again, S and an asterisk, but still, God, he looked good. We're going to hit it on with Phantom as well a little bit later. But he's easily my stock's up guy. Yeah, on the bubble this week after uh, missing the first couple of rounds, so he's about to play his third game. Yeah, I'm sure the Phantom will have all the stats. He's been following him for a very long time, a long time favourite. Um, and, yeah, I mean, when he's up and going, he's awesome to watch. So just a question, maybe in that port midfield, Rosie Butters. I mean, Will and Drew's having a crazily good year. And then Orna Francis as well. Can they all score well? Obviously, they did on the weekend. I also just love that he looks like an awesome throwback 80s footballer. Socks up, long flowing locks. You love to see it. When do, when do Port play the Bulldogs? Can we get Horn Francis and Sanders like socks oh, off? Yeah, the socks off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I love. I'm look. I I was on the JHF train before the season, so I think I'm now just like stocks are up. I like that was my vibe before the season, and if you've got that vibe. You want to keep riding it, right? It's like, yeah, yeah I was right. Come yeah. on, man. Socks up, stocks up. That's it. Oh, perfect. Al, who are you getting your socks up around getting their stocks up? <laughs> um, well, I'm. Uh, yeah, if I can follow what's going on there. Uh, Sam Flanders <laughs> is the man for me. I actually brought him in, um, pardon me, last week, and um, I was a little bit nervous when I saw he wasn't in any of the centre bounces for Gold Coast and Dimmers decided to move him to half back, but that actually worked out really well. There was uh, a lot of mouths to feed in the uh, the middle of the ground there with GWS and Gold Coast, so many good players. So it worked really nicely having him float around in the back line, picking up heaps of uh, sort of cheap possessions, and he uses the ball really well. So in the forward line, it's just really hard to find now, especially with Luke Jackson. We're not quite sure what's happening there. Give uh, Isaac Heaney a tick. Apart from that, I'm not really sure who the top-end forwards are going to be this year. We saw uh, Harry Mackay, um, bur- the bubble burst a bit on the weekend. As the a- bubble burst, my heart <laughs> burst when he fumbled that ball. Oh, God. I love, like, I was surrounded by Carlton fans while that was happening as well. Everybody, talk about head in hands there, Patch. Just like everybody's going, can, he's either going to send that one into the River Torrens, kick a goal and then boot a bag, or apparently just fumble it and completely cook it. So I like that you have the second option on the table, though. <laughs> what I'd give for that second option would be <laughs> a lot. Would be Tough a lot. Sense. But, but stupid, uh, stupid Sexy yeah. Flanders was amazing. And his, his price has already gone up a bit, but he's still, um, you know, Cheaper than he's going to be, I think, if you wait longer for him. He's going to be someone we want in our teams at the end of the year. So if you can get there now from, you know, a James Jordan type, it's a little bit of a jump, but um, I think he'd be number one on my list. Very nice. Patch? Um, Naziah Wanganine Miller knocked my socks off on the weekend <laughs> um, at Norwood, scored 114, averaging 106 for the year. Good at football. The Saints seem to love to get it into his hands. Um, you know, Jack Sinclair coming back this week didn't affect his scoring at all. Um, he still looks like the number one man, isn't having to do a whole lot of defending um, because they just want him to be that distributor. So maybe he cops some attention, probably averages about that 1.5 to 1.10 range, but he's 520K. Um, he's dirt cheap for what, you know, what you'd hope he'd be from here on out. I think he's, he's a really good buy this week if you're looking for someone in the back line. 
It's like he's like the one saving grace from my just absolute schmozzle of a Hayden Young situation where I got rid of Hayden Young, but I brought in at least Naziah Wanganee Miller. So yeah. happy days there. Uh, stocks down. Easily James Jordan for me, Al. Uh, this is just like we saw Taylor Adams come back this week for the Swans. We just eked out the last little <laughs> bit of value out of James Jordan. What, he went up by like 5 or 6K. It's like that might be actually vaguely important down the track, yeah. you know. When you come up 200 bucks short, you're just like, what am I doing here? This is breaking my heart. But I think just his role, it's not quite as expansive as we thought it might have been preseason. Um, and now with Parker due to come back as well, I think it's time to, uh, and obviously the buy this week, gone. Yeah, but all the uh, planets just all line up to say trade. Yep. So wait, who about you, how about you for the stocks down, Al? Um, well, the one I'm looking at is Blake Howes in defence, who a few weeks ago looked like he was going to be a great rookie moneymaker for us there. In the last couple of weeks, it's uh, it's really sort of gone a bit pear-shaped, uh, scoring the 20s, and then he managed to get to 46 uh, last round. But uh, now that break-even is creeping right up into the 50s, so very questionable whether he'll get that uh, this week. And I still have Nick Caulfield and Zach Reed just sitting on my bench doing absolutely nothing. But there's a few cheap rookies around in the back line all of a sudden, and it's just a question of do I move on at Caulfield finally, or maybe I can afford to just have him sit there for a few more weeks. It's best 18 scoring and uh, get rid of Howes and just make a little bit of cash on the deal. Yeah, because his break even, it is like, yeah, slipped up to that really annoying spot where it's like, oh, you haven't scored that for a few weeks. Mm. Rut row, and here <laughs> we go. So he's gone the 46 last week, 26 the week prior, and his break even is now 56, and he's priced at 223. So... It gets well, he's scoring 66 this week, isn't it? That's how maths works. Yeah. He just keeps, yeah. <laughs> Incremental. A few weeks he'll be scoring 126. Like, I like it. Lock it in. You heard yeah. it here. <laughs> Sweet. Well, the house the thing. patch guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> the house one is just, it is really, it's annoying. And it's like, all right, you got to pull the pin. He's made 99 for you already, though. So yeah, that's all right. You're fine with that, right? What about you there, Patch? Whose stock's down? Um, the Lockie Bramble train has come to a screeching halt, um, you know, as a, uh, a mid-pricer in a loop beverage coach team, was always going to come to a very unfortunate end, probably very quickly. And after 36 or something on the weekend, um, it was not a lot. Um, and, you know, he started the year pretty well, had a ton, had a 90, had an 80. I, I actually looked at trading him in this week before settling on Wagon and Miller if I wanted to save the cash. Um, thank goodness I didn't because, yeah, that's... You know, the Bulldogs didn't have a great game of halfback. Most of their halfbacks all scored pretty poorly, but um, Bramble's break even is now 72, and you've now got pretty serious doubts as to if he reaches it. If you bought him in as a keeper, why? But sure, maybe you keep him if you believe in him, but I would be, he's about to start losing cash, so I would throw him to the curb. I don't know. That's the one thing where I'm like, all right, the break even 73. And who does he play this week, Patch? Oh. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> that asterisk. I team. mean, look, the, the, if he's playing in the back line, there's not a lot of rebounding to do out of the Essendon forward line. So maybe he still, maybe he doesn't touch it. I don't know, but maybe he might just drop 140. Like this is this is oh, where yeah. we're at when it comes to Essendon. Who knows? Oh, I love it but though. The it's a tough one for Bramble, and I feel like every time you play Essendon, though, you might just want to wait that one week. Just just maybe hang on. All right. Without further ado, we'll go take a quick break, bring in the Phantom, and talk some Bubble Boys. All right, here we are. We've brought him back on after a massive, massive gather round. Calling in from parts unknown as per usual. It's Phantom. Phantom, how was your gather round? Gather round was very good. Some big super coach scores and talking points as well, but more, more importantly, a lot of fun and good to see uh, you in the flesh in our beautiful city, James. It was very fun. I enjoyed Adelaide. I'm like, aha! The Ballarat of South Australia. This is great. <laughs> no, I loved it. I had a great time. Obviously, hanging out with you as well was very fun. Uh, but after it sort of, you know, after the wash, how are you feeling about your bubble boys so far this week? You've written a massive piece on codesports.com.au. What are the uh, key names that were sort of jumping off the page for you, jumping into that one? Well, everything jumps off the page uh, in that article, James. If you haven't read it, you'll find that out now. But um, all the rookies this week um, really aren't this week. Um, we finally got um, what lo who looked to be saviours in defence. Uh, Sam Clohesey, uh, the Gold Coast mature ager from Werribee in the VFL. Um, Damien Harwick said he was outstanding on a wing, and he was on debut. Scored a super coach ton. He's 102k in defence. 
he's one you can probably break a golden super coach rule for and go early because there's going to be a few options on the bubble next week as well. Will Graham, his teammate, um, first year draftee, attended 49% of standard bounces for the Suns on debut, 17 touches, seven contested possessions. 67 points for him. So there's some good names. Both you could give another week. Um, but again, we, you need to start thinking ahead. We did trade plans three or four weeks in advance. So if it means going early on one, Sam Godhidi from the Suns could be it this week. How do you feel about this one, Al? Yeah, I think uh, that's where I'm likely to go as well. Um, Charlie Combin's the other one who put up a massive mm. score in his first game for the year and getting traded in by quite a lot of teams. This week, uh, he's been a forward in the past, had some shocking injuries. Um, Clarko sticks him at centre-half back and he's taking contested marks, intercept marks all over the place. Can we trust him, Phantom? Good question, Al. Probably can't fully trust him yet. Six intercept marks he took against the Lions you mentioned there. and um, They could have thrown him four. They've got injuries. They, need, they can't kick a score. So sure, if they were going to play him forward or move him forward, um, Clarko would have already done that. And he came out after the game and said he was very accomplished as a back. They've been training him in defence uh, over the preseason. So he looks to be staying in defence. And before his senior return, he had 22 touches, 15 intercept possessions, and eight intercept marks um, for 134 super coach points in the VFL. Uh, and then in round one, the VFL two, uh, another six intercept marks. So. The stat line against the Lions, you know, we thought, wow, this is really out of the box. And it is for someone who hasn't done the top level, but the numbers have been there at the State League in that role. So trust, maybe not fully, but um, I think at the price, we can be confident enough to take a risk on. Nice one. There was also another name that we, we brought up, you know, weeks prior, Jeremy Sharp. And I think Al wants to know if he can bring him in yet or not. What do you reckon, Al? (laughs) Well, I mean, I fortunately picked him at the start of the year, just had him sitting on my bench. It was a bit annoying that I didn't get that 126 points uh, on field on the weekend, but he's making a huge amount of money. He's already gone up, what, 130 grand, but he's got the second lowest break even in Supercoach at the moment behind Clohesi, I think negative 51. If you didn't have Jeremy Sharp, maybe Sam Darcy you could throw in the same conversation. Is it too late to jump on someone like this who could make another 100 grand? I mean, Sam Darcy, you mentioned he's the one... Um, but with Jeremy Sharp, he's going to make a lot of money, you said, but then if, he, if it's a low, lower score this week at that price, that break even is going to rise pretty quickly. Um, it's not, it goes up a lot higher than those guys under 200K. So might make in the next couple of weeks some quick cash, but again, it can turn pretty south and you'd probably want to be making a bit of money. Maybe you're trading a James, James Jordan from Sydney down to him then you're making money in the trade, then making money from um, Sharp himself for the next couple of weeks. But again, I wouldn't sort of be sideways in a rookie trade. You want to be making that cash with your trades um, as well immediately. So I'm not against it, but I can't say uh, I'm all for it. And we, we half mentioned Ollie Dempsey was probably too expensive last week at 216. I think I have to put Sharp in the, um, that ship of sale basket. He's in the Sharps cabinet. He's in one of those Sharps boxes. Can't get him out. Uh, other names that were floating around, because we've got a pretty big name on the bubble. JHF, Jason Horn Francis. How are we feeling about this? How have we got this far without the fans of mentioning uh, his boy? Well, just trying to keep him under wraps. Uh, we know I'm big on uh, Jason um, from time over here. Now, I'm not going to delve into his junior numbers um, and point out that the stat line we saw on the weekend, um, not um, unusual. Jason Horn Francis as a kid. So he can do it all. That's been key to the, um, his game coming through the ranks, does everything. Did that on Saturday night against the Bombers. Um, only played just over half a game as well coming on. So I was there watching him closely in to say he passed the eye test for the understatement of the year. So 433K, speaking of making cash, he's going to do that. Uh, and hopefully, um, and for, you know, he's their second or third guy. Um, maybe even second guy in that midfield. They love him. He's going to stay in there um, providing his body holds up. So, again, some quick cash and maybe he can average three figures from here. Nice one. Are there any, any other names that are sort of floating around the back of your head that you're keeping an eye on as well? I do remember last week saying, oh, geez, just keep an eye on Elijah Hollands and he went out and got me 19 <laughs> points this week. I didn't trade him in though, so I at least sort of dodged that bullet. That's why you keep an eye on them. Uh, what do you think? Any other names floating around? 
Yeah, that was an issue. We obviously mentioned Billy Dowling on the show last week, didn't come in uh, for the Crows, but there's still hope that um, he does come in at some point. Keep an eye uh, on those um, team sheets. But again, Toby Conway, another name we mentioned last week, uh, if he can come back in, didn't play last week for the Cats, 180k Ruckman, if he is named, could uh, you potentially consider the Brody Grundy trade or Conway somewhere in there to cover, given we know Grundy's going to miss with the Swans, so he'll be playing one short in the rut, potentially. So look out for Geelong's team sheet and Toby Conway. Nice one. And Patch, get in there. Get in there, Patch. One, one last one. Um, Mitch Giordiades, I didn't watch the, uh, the Port game too closely because I had fingers covering my eyes most of the second half. Um, George Yardy scored very well and is very cheap. Is he one, obviously not to bring in this week, but one to look at for next week? Do we need to keep him in our plans moving forward? Well, maybe, but um, yeah, he's not going to play Essendon every week, uh, as we know. So he did it pretty easy. But 230k, we know he's a good player. We know Port like him. 99 super coach points for him. I think you definitely wouldn't go early. I think you want to see it again. But again, he is a four. He's not quite your, your general um, tall key four. He does get up the ground. And Ken even said um, that they're going to use him further up the ground. He's going to be in its new look. Mitch Georgiard is coming back for the knee. So that is a plus uh, when we're thinking about what he can do in Supercoach. But I do want to see it again. We'll come back next week. Um, but I still think he might struggle for consistency in his scores. There you go. Anything else there, Al? No, I think yeah, the Phantoms covered it off. It's yeah, it's an interesting time with just yeah, getting those rookies right. And um, yeah, the, the I think uh, maybe the one bubble boy this week is Tyler Sonzi at the Tigers. You wouldn't consider him based on his scores, but there's a few queuing up for maybe next week. So we need to start mm. thinking about those guys right now. Nice one. All right, there you go. You can hear him as well on the uh, Phantoms Lair show as well. But thanks once again, Phantom. Good to hang out with you on the weekend as well. Thank you, guys. See you next gather round. All right, how good was that from the Phantom? I'll tell you what, it was pretty fun hanging out with him over there in SA. Didn't give me any tips, though. Breaking my heart. a tour of the lair? I did, the lair. It was very fun, very weird. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of weird stuff on the walls. Is anyway. It mold? <laughs> <laughs> he was just walking around Adelaide like in a tism mask as well, though. Just, it's like, he's like oh, I'll have you. Isn't uh, that regular attire in Adelaide, though? Isn't cool. that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk captains for this week. Gather around last week. I mean, we sort of uh, had a few really good options, obviously. Obviously, as you said, Al, Haney hit in a big way. And I took uh, Gornicus, Maximus Aurelius Gornicus as my vice captain. I think he got to the, what, 129? Yep. And I was happy to take that. Didn't want to roll the dice, even with uh, Tom Green still going up against uh, the Suns, right? And mm-hmm. they played a fascinating game. And this is the interesting idea. So Tom Green, those two midfielders just went hammer and tongs. And it sort of just sort of squeezed out some of the scores, I think. But this week, it's pretty easy, I think, again, just going back to Gornicus. We're going back to the Max Gordon well for the vice captain. For Thursday night, they play the Lions at the G. It's a big game for both teams. Obviously, a bigger one for the Lions, really. But he could go huge. What did he score last time they played, Al? I uh, just looked that up before, 215, which I think if that was your VC, you'd probably take that, I imagine. Probably. Probably loophole that somehow. <laughs> Bont is playing Essendon <laughs> this weekend. I don't, I don't, know. Yeah. I don't is, know. Is there a cap on how many points a player can score <laughs> in a Supercoach match? Here we are. Um, um, but Gornicus is the easy one, I think, for me. I think that's just lock and load for the VC. And then if I had Bont, if I weren't an idiot and decided to wait on that and just, oh, he might come down a little bit. No, anyway. But he is playing against and that sort of seems the, the obvious one for me. Uh, Tom Green is probably where I'm going to land, if not Rosie, of my other options. Uh, we've got Green playing the Saints at Manica, and we've got Port. That's a sort of more interesting sort of situation where I think, as we sort of talked about, like it could be Butters, though, who goes big this week rather than Rosie. Or JHF could have another massive game, right? So... Um, I think in terms of Rosie's projected sort of price, he hasn't actually scored that well against Freo, but they are at home again, and he loves Adelaide Oval. So I don't know, probably I might end up landing probably with Green. Rosie's my other option there. Yeah, the, every chance they send Hayden Young to tag or do a, a bit of work on, on Rosie, though, considering he tore Essendon to shreds several times. Checks out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, can hear the, you can hear the tears on the inside. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, I think it's pretty simple this week. Just gone, and if for some unknown reason that doesn't work out, Bond is the, uh, your fallback. I think um, Tom Stewart probably is, is a decent shout 
against North could score all right, but uh, he only got the 77 on the weekend. So, I mean, the only one, other one that uh, looks up, uh, jumps off the page when I look at some of the numbers, if someone's been carrying uh, Jordan Dawson so far this year, four scores under 100, it's been really painful, but has a fantastic record against Carlton, averages about 140 against them uh, in his last three games. So Gee, this be, could be the bounce be back bold. game. But... It'd be bold. <laughs> Especially coming over to Marvel as well, right? Like I feel like Jordan Dawson would revel once more in uh, Adelaide Oval. They tore them up last year. Yeah, and that was Marvel a massive game trickier. for him. Yeah. Uh, what about you there, Patch? Um, yeah, I mean it'll be it'll be gone into Cohen Livingston. Uh, he's <laughs> yes. probably going to be the the captaincy option, but um, yeah, Tom Green playing in Canberra as a Canberra boy, it just feels right. It just feels like a nice little like. Big thumbs up. Um, <laughs> That's easy. You know, like Harry Sheasel, maybe there'll be a lot of rebounding to do, but I just don't feel comfortable putting the C on him. I would rather have a VC yeah. in play for, for especially a younger guy like that who gets a lot of uncontested work. Could be cut out of the game a bit or could be, you know, had some attention paid to him. But, yeah, it'll be it'll be a Tom Green back up to, to Max. Nice. Yeah, the Cheezer was a good one, I think, put forward last week by the stats guy. Um and it was a pretty good call, I think, for North, like playing against what Brisbane. Yep. Managed to 124, wouldn't have been too bad. But down yeah. there at Geelong, it might be a little bit trickier. Yeah, I agree on that this week. But what's he averaging? I mean, 123. Not, not so one to just remember each week because he's the sort of guy that he, why aren't we talking about him as a potential captain every week when he scores over 120? So. Yeah. And, you know, the the dimensions at Norwood and Geelong aren't too dissimilar. Yeah, slightly, slightly more curved boundary <laughs> cut in your park, but... Um, it is still a weird shaped oval, though. It's a like, weird shaped oval, and there'll know. be a lot of rebounding to do. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you're feeling lucky. Righto, quick fire round. Let's do it. I'm going to throw this one to you, Patch. A lot of folks are trading out Brody Grundy. Mm -hmm. Not entirely sure why. No, no. Quick fire. Should we? No, absolutely <laughs> not. What All are right. you doing? <laughs> if you were of that persuasion, though, uh, I would not be. <laughs> who would you be looking for? Like, obviously, there's the options like Tim English. Rowan Marshall, Cherry, Lloyd Meek, question mark? Oh. It seems like there's a lot of Meek fans. I want to say Meek Mill fans. Like there are a lot of Meek Mill fans, but mm. Lloyd Meek fans, a little bit different. Uh, 357, 300. Meek will inherit a, a forward role at some stage during the year. He'll inherit the ruck role. I just, as someone that's owned Hawthorne rucks in like keeper leagues and dynasty leagues um, and supercoach drafts, I'd never want to do it again. Um, I mean, the, the philosophy I have around Grundy is that, you know, if you've picked him as part of a set and forget mindset, you've you've set it, forget trading him. Don't worry about it. If you picked him as a cash generator, strange, but sure, like, you know, he hasn't made much cash. I think he's been good. You'd, you know, if you're going to trade him, you'd want to go to Marshall or English, which Al, we spoke about it really early a bit earlier today. Yeah, I think like you said, um, if you if you go down, you're just risking, you know, one of these revolving doors which we've had in years gone by in the ruck where you just, you know, you get Meek or Tristan Cherry in, make yeah. a little bit of money but not heaps, yeah. and then in five or six weeks you're looking at trading them out and then, yeah, like if you can yeah. somehow get all the way up to an English or maybe Ron Marshall, maybe you could do that. Yeah. But um, I, I don't vehemently hate that quite as much as I get repulsed by the idea of going from Grundy to Lloyd Meek, um, <laughs> which, like, if you want to do it, don't come crying back to us in a couple of weeks when it goes south. But, yeah, I don't think it's a Kieran Briggs situation with our, our friend Lloyd. Nice. Yes. I mean, the thing about uh, Hawthorne Rucks is that I think for the first two rounds they had Ned Reeves in the yeah. ruck and Meek in the VFL. Then they flipped it over and Meek's been good the last two weeks, but Reeves is still there. Yeah, um, and, and they, they played both of them at stages last year, depending on injuries. Ramsden played on the weekend as well as a, you know, he's a ruckman primarily, developing as a key forward. I just, it just, oh, oh, get just the, don't do it. So the 12,000 of you out there have already done that. Reverse. Stop it. Reverse don't this do it. What are you doing? Uh, Al, do we need to get Nick Martin and Hayden Young back? Oh, this one just hurts my soul. Um, I mean, maybe not this week, but I think we definitely need to just uh, forget everything that happened in the first few weeks and judge them on their merits. And I think both could end up being in the top 10, say, defenders at the end of the year. Um, Hayden Young is a defender now. We think he'll get, uh, he almost certainly will get defender mid-status when we get our first round of position changes, which is coming in a couple of weeks' time. And Martin is a midfielder now, but he'll get mid-defence. Um, so I probably wouldn't pick him as a midfielder to stick there for the whole season. But if you can move him back to the back line, which uh, uh, there's a few holes there, that could actually be a pretty smart move. His price is still reasonable. Um, he hasn't gone up too much after those first couple of poor scores earlier in the year. But I'm probably... 
prepared to wait until maybe after the, all the early buys are done, assess where he sits in those defenders and maybe have to pay a little bit more for him then. But, yeah, I think he's definitely someone we have to talk about given just the sheer amount of footy that he wins. I, yeah, I'm slightly concerned that that could be shut off either by someone paying him attention. You know, he's not going to get, you know, 35 touches every week. Is I mean, although, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, Essendon are bad with him doing it, so they might not bother. Yeah. But, you know, Essendon might also change their game plan where they go, let's go back to, kick, you know, letting Mason Redmond kick it. Or Jordan Ridley could still come back and then, you know, long term that may change the ball distribution out of the back line, maybe... Andy McGraw and Nick Martin go get together and go, we can't really just handball it to each other. This is not good for football. Um, good for Supercoach. Great for Supercoach, but I don't, yeah, I, it concerns me a little bit more as someone that still has Nick Martin as well. Even Archery had the 44 touches and the 135. I'm like, I still kind of want to trade him out. Um, <laughs> so I know I'd be much more comfortable with Hayden Young because he's got that a more reliable role, getting a lot of points from tackles and contested ball. I wouldn't be running back to Nick Martin just yet. Also, the more people that run back to him, the more likely he is to get bad again because that's how science works. So well, <laughs> please yeah. don't ruin him for me. I need this. That is like super coach, like uh, karma for me. If I went and got him back oh. into my team, he would 100% plummet. Like yeah. It would be over. It's yeah. like, nah. Tim Mitchell, if you're listening, don't you dare. Don't you dare bring him back in, Tim. <laughs> All right. Who's, speaking of which, like, who is a player that you've got your eye on coming down in price in the next few weeks? Uh, easy one for me is Darcy Parrish. Like he's had a couple of uh, pretty quiet ones and could easily shed about 100K over the next few rounds. If he has literally a quiet one against the Dogs this week, it could get pretty ugly pretty quick. And then you're kind of hoping, though, that you want to see him actually bounce back and have a good score at some point. When does he play Essendon? <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Clayton Oliver is the other one. He's already down to 543, and like he's got the buy in round six. He could be under 500,000, Al, after round six, which would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, to get him at a price like that, if you'd, someone told you that um, at the start of the year, you'd think you'd just snap him up straight away. We, you probably, with these guys, I think definitely smart to have them on your radar. Um, you can get some real bargains. I know everyone's sort of, you know, we'd love to get Caleb Sarong or Tom Green, but um, sometimes the best picks of the year can be someone who's dropped in value and you get on them at the right price um, and they come home for you. But you just want to see a bit of that turnaround game uh, one or two good scores before you can look to bring them in. So he's definitely on my radar, but, I mean, obviously extremely interrupted preseason. be interesting to see if he uh, can turn it around. And Luke Davies, Uniac's the other one I'm looking at as well. Dropped, I think after this week, it'll be around 100000 off his starting price, and I was very close to starting him at the start of the year, but uh, just hasn't gone well for him. I'm not really sure what actually is wrong with him. He's still playing um, the same position, same role, for the kangaroos, but the scores just aren't there. But could be someone we could pick up really cheap. It's like it's the super coach version of what we say on the AFL Today show of too many dudes, too many dudes. Randomly enough, North Melbourne, who are no good, have got a lot of guys scoring like roughly similar-ish kind of super coach points as well. It feels like too many dudes just sort of in there. Whereas last year, LDU was just free and clear to basically rack up as much as he could. It's like the sort of same thing we've seen with like the warlord. Uh, Cheezle's obviously yeah. crushing it, stuff like that. Tom Powell's come in and just absolutely crushed it too, though. And you're like, ah, too many dudes. Here we go. Uh, what about you there, Patch? Who are you looking at for a player who's going to drop? Um, there's one coming off the bye next week uh, in Jordan Degoe, who has dropped. Um, might not do all that much more dropping. On the weekend, I don't have the points in front of me, but he looked like he had a bit more of his mojo back. He was moving uh, um, through the middle a bit more. The Pies were looking for him. Um, and, you know, they tend to look like a better football side when they do. He's under 500K. He's 460-odd thousand dollars, which is remarkably cheap for a guy that could average 105, potentially 110 um, as a full-time midfielder. One to really keep an eye out for next week if uh, if you're that way inclined. Um, the other one I'm looking at this week to trade in is a Gold Coast Suns forward in Levi, I mean, um, <laughs> in, in Jack Lacocious. Um Jack Lacocious has moved to half back after playing as kind of the third tall forward um, with Jed Walter coming into that side. Um, you know, they've got those those key forward posts there. If one goes down, Levi Casbolt comes in from the VFL. I think Lacocious to half back is a, a move they're going to stick with. He's an incredible kick, taking lots of kick outs, um, can boot a goal from 65, can kick it long down the line. And we know long points, uh, long kicks are, are long points, um, many <laughs> yeah. points. Um, so, you know, I think he. He's not going to average, you know, 105, 110, might be a 90 to 95 guy. But the kicker is, he's 400K. 
and in James, the forward line. And in the forward line, going to get defence eligibility. James Jordan, 350k. If you're cash strapped after spending too much money last week, like I am, I don't, may, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Lacocious. There, there are worse trades you could make. <laughs> there are. Leg there legally, are. there are worse trades you could make. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. It, I just think I just think he's neat. I I just think he's holding neat. up the spud. I holding up that. the spud. Maybe. Nice one. It's a uh, definitely a pod Seattle, that one. Jack Lacocious is a POD. Uh, pull the pin really quickly. Yeah, nah. James Jordan. Yeah, gone. Nah. As in, nah, don't nah, keep. He's gone. All right. He's gone. Nah. Jai Clark. Um, not trading him out just yet, but yeah, he's uh, he's just hanging in there at the moment. Um, not really making much money, but sort of not causing too many issues for me on the midfield bench. But maybe when a, a suitable replacement comes along, he uh, is ready to give him the flick. I would like to confirm that. Yeah, nah, from Al. <laughs> <laughs> he's on the, not bad. Break even of 11, you sort of just keep him around, right? It's like right. 28. Yeah, he's had a couple of 60s. It's a tough one. Uh, Aaron Cadman, interesting sort of setup there for GWS. He had the 50 this week. Uh, the break even is sort of still eminently doable. It's just always a bit tricky when it comes to uh, the likes of Cadman, right? What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I'd be keeping him, just hoping he can get another little spike score and get that uh, cash rolling again. Probably just yeah. want him on the bench, though. Yeah, ne negative three break even. Still plenty of money to make. Yep. Um, even if he, you know, pump, pumps out another 50 or 60. And the other one, who dimmer anointed Gary Ablett Jr., 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 uh, Sexton. Let's go, Alex Sexton. 182, got dropped last week. Are we pulling the pin, Al? Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he also has a negative break even, so in theory could make more money. He's probably going to get DPP as well, forward uh, defence. But um, if he's in the VFL, not much use. Great for your VFL supercoach side. <laughs> yeah. um, incredible for that, but um, stock's up. On that front, stock's down. Uh, yeah, get rid of it. Is that a shock to you that Alex Sexton has not worked out as a, a supercoach pick? I look, a 30-year-old guy that's played, key for, you know, played forward pocket for his entire career, not making a good defender, blindsided. Could just blow me down with a feather. No one saw that coming. coming. Especially the week after I traded him in in a dynasty league too, which, <laughs> mwah. Nice. Oh, kiss of death. All right, name game. It's a game of names. We've got a couple of names. Al might be absolutely crushing in the supercoach front, but he's also getting crushed when it comes to the game of names. Uh, last week I had Sanders, you had McKercher, uh, because I had very, I don't know, dumbly had McKercher in my team the entire preseason then dropped him right at the end. And he's been pretty good, but this week he only had the 54. Sanders ripped off 82, so I was pretty happy with that. You're now, I so, believe, 0 and 4 though for the year. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not great. Um, I think it's the too many dudes. I didn't, I didn't think of that, uh, the too many dudes issue before that game. But Clarko decided to throw McCurcher into the midfield. He's been just racking up at halfback, and um, all of a sudden he's competing with all those other names you mentioned, and he puts up a bad score. So put him back to halfback, please, Alistair. Nice one. This week we've got a couple of, uh, what is this, Canberra v Canberra. Yeah. Tom Green yeah. versus Jack Steele, Al. Who are we liking in this one? It is a head-to-head. -head. I mean, I feel bad. I want to go Tom Green. I've got Tom yeah, Green. Yeah, I, I think you can. I, I'm liking Jack Steele. He's been so good to start the year. I've put him, um, you know, uh, put him in my team thinking hopefully he gets back to somewhere near his, uh, you know, three or four years ago when he was 120. He was, he was your 3 a.m. pickup, wasn't he? He was, like, yeah. Brought him in at 3 a.m. Yeah. Uh, before his first game in round one. And, yeah, he's absolutely killing it. Uh, the, the, the little weird-shaped ground, I think, probably helped him on the weekend. Stacks of tackles and uh, contested ball there. But 142 points yeah. was fantastic. And I think, um, yeah, he won't mind playing up in Canberra. Nice yeah. one. Well, I'm happy to be stuck with Tom Green. I, I'm that. You really twisted my arm there. It takes Tom Green. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. Who do you reckon is going to uh, top that one there, Patch? Uh, I think it'll be a draw. Nice. I think they're going to score the exact same number of points. Everyone had a fun time. Everyone. Uh, why can't I? Who's going to have the most fun? Why aren't you asking that question, James? All right, last quick fire round. Boost or no boost this week? Boost! What do you reckon, Al? Boost or no boost? No, I'm trying to hold off on the boost. I used a couple early, but uh, I think... When we're, they're going to be really useful is in two or three weeks' time as those early buyers go into the rear vision mirror and we want to try and, you know, some of these rookies like the Sanders and McKercher will be uh, fattened up and ready to cash in and we, the boost will be really handy then to be able to turn them into maybe a, a Clayton Oliver um, or some of these fallen primos. So um, if you can hang on to them, uh, that would be my advice. Patch? Noosed. Noosed. <laughs> which, is not, which is no boost, obviously. Yeah, I've, I've already used two, so I've got three in the can. I feel okay about not boosting this week. Yeah, I, I think there's there's an argument to be made for restraint because, you know, this these are the years in the past where, or the weeks in the past where, 
you know, we'd, we'd hold off trading and not trade at all and just wait for the cows to fatten. And now, you know, with the extra trades, there's that pressure to oh, always be churning over guys and be bringing in more players. So, I don't know, there's an argument to be made for just, just sitting, just, just letting, them, letting them grow for a bit. After gather round, I also just need like a bit of, you know, just let it, let it all settle. Yeah. Just let everything <laughs> settle for a second. Uh, before we go, we always do this. What's your Tuesday trade? Uh, the one that you go, oh, yeah, I'll give that a look. Might let it sit there. Might reverse it tomorrow. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Mine's easy. I've just gone from Jordan and Howes to Jason Horn Francis and Will Graham, who we talked about with uh, with the Phantom. Just A, he's got the defensive mid double yeah, sort like of eligibility, which is kind of handy. And uh, I'll just sort of wait that extra week, I think, on Closey because I just thought about it. It's just like, I don't know if I want to do that just yet. So that's where I'm at. I can manage to slot that in under the uh, salary cap and feel pretty good. What about you, Well? Yeah, very uh, boring for me this week. I think I um, uh, could potentially not trade at all, but I think I'll, I'll get one of those uh, Gold Coast cheapies because we could get stuck next week um, if uh, they both go well again and then maybe Combin has another good game yep. and then who knows what else might happen. So just to not leave myself in a, a big hole next week, I'll bring in, I think I like Closey. I think I can trust him. Um, played on the wing. Dimmer was talking him up after the game, so although we did talk up Alex Sexton as we mentioned. But, um, yeah, so I think how's to him um, and then just maybe leave that little bit of cash in the bank to uh, – Figure out what I do with that down the track. Very nice, Patch. Yeah, I have bought in Lacocious as a Tuesday trade, and it's the more it sits there, the more I go, eh, mm, I don't, <laughs> mm, maybe. It's the um, very ideal of a tr- Tuesday trade, though, the Lacocious one. You're like, how does that look? It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look, doesn't look bad, um, especially with not a lot of cash lying around. Um, you know, Clark down to Closey, um, Jordan up to um, Lacocious, maybe. We'll see. Not I don't, bad. I don't we'll mind see. it in the forward line when we just, as we said, we're just so up in the air who those top end forwards are mm. going to be. And without many DPPs on the horizon. No, it doesn't either. look like we're going to so, get too many, you know, no bond forward mid to come and save us, I don't think so. No. Um, yeah, you could do worse than have him sitting there for, you know, make some money and then see where we sit. Yeah, and then, you know, backstage of the year, ideally he'd be that guy you can swing between the bench and the forward line and the back line. Mm. Um, doesn't really get on the field unless you, they're playing, you know, North Melbourne or West yeah, Coast. Yeah, that's pl- planning way ahead. This is why you're... Uh, the super coach icon that you are. <laughs> <laughs> you flatter me. <laughs> and one last, last, last curveball. Libba had 155 this week. <laughs> Who did the dogs play this week, huh? <laughs> uh, he might go all right. 180? What do you reckon? <laughs> go big uh, for Libba. Could be subbed out. Could, could be. be subbed in. You could yeah. get I don't know. You got bevo <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah, the dogs. So you got Bevo, you got the Bombers. It's just, it's it's just an, an unstoppable force and an immovable object. <laughs> and it's just... Someone's going to get hurt, and it'll be me. I'm going to get hurt. <laughs> All right, what do you reckon? Over, under, 142. Uh, no, I don't think you'll quite get there, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that Libra or the margin? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tricky one. I like it. All right, but that's it for the round five preview. Remember to dig into all things Supercoach across X, YouTube, IG, TikTok. Uh, of course, all the way across codesports.com.au. You can check out the Phantoms Lair in this feed now as well. Make sure you review, subscribe across all your podcast apps. Get some stars in. It's really tricky to find the stars on Spotify. Did you know that? It's really hard. You've got to dig in a little bit. It's like, oh, there they are. Okay. You've got to be Bye. really committed to, to yeah. leave a rating on Spotify. So make sure it's five. Or we'll send Al after you. Uh, sign up to Supercoach Plus, of course, for all the insights you need. As I mentioned, codesports.com.au. Get your tips in with tips.com.au as well. For all the latest news and fun gear as well, you can get around AFL Today Show. That's a good one. I'm on that. Uh, but as always... Thank you, Al. Thank you, James. Uh, Isaac Heaney and Co. just rest up, earn the week off, um, have a nice, uh, not an alcoholic cocktail maybe, and um, yeah, we'll be back into it. Nice one. Great debut, Patch. That was Thank awesome. Thank you. Pleasure to, happy to be here. Um, pleasure, aside from all of the Essendon jokes <laughs> um, every couple of minutes, but, you know, it's all right. I... I deserve it. We'll up the rate next time as well. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and always, thanks to Phantom for calling in. I've been James Clements. Remember, happy super coaching. 